The islands that make up the South Pacific are at a crossroads. Its high dependency on fossil fuels coupled with global greenhouse gas emissions are slowly sinking some of the low-lying atolls and high cost of these imported petroleum products are burning deep holes in the budgets of these tiny island nations, setting the clock back on much needed development. There is a need and demand for universal access to energy, but on their current path of dependency on fossil fuel generated energy, these islands know they are on the path of destruction. Most all countries in the region depend heavily on imported uh, petroleum fuel. So they're burning uh, fossil fuel, they're creating, they're emitting greenhouse gases. The climate is changing. No longer can these islands afford to turn a blind eye on greenhouse gas emission. The threat of climate change is at their doorsteps. This had a huge effect on subsistence living, the way of life for thousands of Samoans. What greenhouse gas is already in the atmosphere, will, the momentum of which will carry on to affect sea level rise. Sea level rise. In 2007, 12 of these South Pacific islands signed a memorandum of understanding with the governments of Italy and Austria, paving the way for hope in cleaner, more renewable energy sources for these countries. The big issue is how do you get a more e efficient um, energy uh, alternative that, um, that has the right portfolio mix of renewables and um, also uh, efficiency, reducing the diesel that's being brought into countries. The 12 countries began to pioneer programs in the region with the funding from the Italian and Austrian counterparts. These programs have now begun to distinguish themselves for being creative, dynamic and groundbreaking in providing energy solutions and concepts that are relevant to small island states. The projects have been overseen by the International Union for Conservation of Nature and host governments through their relevant departments. We are lucky here in the region that we have uh, abundant uh, resources, uh, renewable energy resources like uh, sunshine. Uh, we have uh, some countries have a lot of uh, uh, water which can be developed uh, into small hydro projects. We have wind, uh, I mean, these are the renewable energy resources. We have a biomass, we have coconut, uh, which can be turned into biofuel. Uh, some of the countries are actually doing that in the, in the region. The tiny atoll island of Tuvalu has been slowly sinking. It's said to be the first islands that will fall victim to rising sea levels. Here they are shifting their reliance from diesel generated electricity and have begun trialing solar energy. In 2009, this 46 kilowatt hybrid system was installed to provide electricity at a rural secondary school. 10 months of operation, the project was able to save a significant amount of diesel fuel in the order of 1,440 liters. We like it because it's using the, what's plentiful in the uh, world, and that's sunshine. And uh, you don't have, really have to worry about fuel. And I think uh, this is uh, the answer to our prayers. From the amount of fuel saved, we calculated to approximately four tons of CO2 saved. Definitely we will recommend that uh, this, this be a uh, to do it in other places also. Tuvalu is targeting 100% electricity generation from renewable energy sources by the year 2020. And this project fits in well to this policy target. The savings in fuel cost is allowing school management to shift more of its funds towards the educations of its students. Here the program or the assistance uh, is um, very much in line with the Pacific Island countries' uh, policies on reducing uh, carbon dioxide emission and greenhouse gases, and also along with uh, the national energy or the national energy policies and other policies like climate change policies. 
Solar energy is also being implemented in the Kingdom of Tonga, where a significant percentage of its population live in remote Ida Islands with no access to utilities. In 2008, the Tongan government, in close collaboration with IUCN and donors Italy and Austria, began its solar electrification program. A total of 58 solar panel systems have been installed in homes, churches, schools and community halls over remote Tongan islands. Some socio-economic impacts of the rehabilitation project have already revealed in communities assisted. An improvement has been noted in the income generating activities on these islands. More productivity is being reported also in the subsistent and domestic livelihood of the islanders as well. School children are also enjoying longer hours of studies. Kiribati Solar Energy is serving a dual purpose. It's not only providing a means of electrification, but also helping access to pipe water supply. The solar system installed at the remote Tanakaro Vocational School is a lifesaver for the school that provides Kiribati's labor force its vocational training. It's giving the kids access to clean and consistent pumped water supply. The school plays a vital role in education and the economy of this island nation. Uh, the project is very important um, in the sense that um, it's a project that um, is uh, safe and kind to the environment. Uh, and at the same time, um, it deals with uh, uh, a basic need of uh, you know, human beings, uh, one of the necessities, and that is water. And as a school, uh, we are very uh, happy that uh, we can be able to receive uh, help with this uh, project. And um, getting water is, is not an easy thing in the atolls, where you have to get water from the well. Uh, but uh, with um, this project, uh, it has made a big difference and that is uh, people find it easier to have access uh, to water uh, in their homes. A similar project has been undertaken in the Solomon Islands, where 70% of its boarding schools are based in rural remote locations. These schools previously depended on diesel generators to provide for their lighting and electricity needs. The lack of a reliable and efficient energy source was becoming a hindrance to education as limited lighting hours were hampering students' preparations for exams and doing everyday homework. With the procurement of solar energy, these schools are now focused on providing quality education. Yes, and they're really making an impact in improving their livelihoods apart from reducing their uh, dependence on imported fuel. The, the project or the program is uh, helping with improving the, the standard of living in, in the countries. Samoa is banking on its coconut resources to help them reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and provide a clean energy source for vehicles. The main objective of the project is to, uh, to reduce the uh, Samoa greenhouse gas emissions from the land transport sector. They are actively involved in the development of biofuel from coconut oil. The project is in line with Samoa's national policy on combating climate change, where the reduction of the GHG emissions is the government's first priority under its environmental sustainability goals. The project is enjoying great success in its pilot stages. We were fortunate enough with the IUCN and the government of Austria and Italy to come up with the fund, the funding for the first phase, which is the coconut party. So we've been able to carry out this project so far. And so far we've been very successful on the pilot scale, where late last year, about November, we launched a bio, the, the launch of our biodiesel plant. Uh, with a capacity of 200 litres of biodiesel, which can be produced from one batch run. And uh, ever since we've been producing uh, uh, coconut biodiesel using the locally milled uh, coconut oil from the two uh, oil mill companies in, in, in Samoa. I think this uh, project will benefit the country as a whole because uh, if 
we start commercializing it and then uh, the local companies take over or whatever which means not only there'll be creation of extra uh, employment for people out in rural villages to start planting the, the coconuts but uh, the markets so which means and the biggest uh, benefit is the reduction of uh, or savings on the government part of the capital reserve for so instead of buying fossil fuel oil and and uh, petrol from overseas half say if I, if I can quote an example, if we're producing a half the volume of imported fuel, replacing it with uh, with biodiesel, which means that half of, of the of the, it's half of the savings of the uh, capital reserve, which you're talking in millions at this stage. In July 2008, the municipality of Milan, Italian and Austrian government, gave a grant of 180,000 US dollars to the Fiji government through the Department of Energy for energy projects. The Department of Energy then utilized much of this fund for the biogas pilot project in rural areas. With this program, they were able to train 16 biogas builders when engaged in the construction of seven biogas plants the biogas project is part of the renewable energy program undertaken by the Department of Energy. It is produced through fermentation of organic matter and comprises of a combination of methane and carbon dioxide which makes an exceptional good cooking fuel. Biogas programs contribute to energy and food security, waste management, reduction in deforestation and more importantly improve the health of women in rural areas. Previously, we used to spend a lot of money in buying our gas. Now here we got this uh, piggery and uh, the waste from here uh, is tending to... Uh, uh, we really helpful in doing our cooking at home. Since uh, we know now in Fiji the cost of living is very high, especially those of us here in rural areas. Uh, we do not have a, a lot of uh, money and uh, we are very thankful to, to them. Yeah. And I hope that uh, this will uh, move on to other villages in our rural areas. The Palauans took a different approach with their funding. Palau has adopted an initiative called Green Energy Micronesia, which calls to use 20% renewable energy and achieve 30% energy efficiency by the year 2020. The innovative new home loan scheme is laced with incentives, encouraging home buyers and home builders to incorporate energy efficient measures in their home. This program was funded by the generous support of the Italian and Austrian governments and is in line with our national energy policy. In order to maximize the potential of the energy efficiency program, studies took place to find out where homes were wasting energy and how it could be conserved. Architects were asked to break the mold for standard island home and think green. Houses themselves don't use energy. What uses energy is the equipment inside the house. Air conditioners, ranges, water heaters, lights, those kinds of things. A properly designed house will allow the homeowner to minimize the use of those devices so that he will use less energy. In 2008, the Republic of the Marshall Islands experienced unprecedented increases in the cost of energy, which prompted the national government to officially declare a state of economic emergency. As part of the emergency declaration, a number of executive orders were disseminated. One of them was to improve the overall efficiency of the electricity generation on the two main centres, Majuro and Ebai. One key approach was to retrofit the existing public street lighting systems on the two main islands from MV lamps to efficiency lighting emitting diode lamps. With funding opportunity through the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the RMI purchased LED lamps to retrofit the existing lighting system. In some places uh, where we are implementing this project, we've seen that uh, that people are able to do extra work at night, the women are able to weave, to do handicraft, the men are able to, uh, to do extra work. 
Other island nations like Vanuatu have been involved in small hydro dam projects as a source of their clean energy. The Cook Islands are actively involved in lobbying and formulating the national policy on climate change and renewable energy. We must set targets and priorities for, for this, and those priorities must be based on sound diagnosis, recognizing economic and political constraints, and limited institutional capacities. These are a snapshot of the projects being pioneered in some of the 12 countries across the Pacific. The next step is to take the lessons learned from these projects and the success achieved and translate them in countries throughout the region. Now, if the donors agree to continue with, with the project, we'd like to really see a number of projects or a number of initiatives in each country looking at the different uh, types of uh, renewable energy sources. Because in some countries uh, you have enough wind, enough water, enough sunshine. So there's quite a variety or a range of uh, initiatives that you can develop to assist these countries. Eh?